The lights are going to go green and the first draw is Philip Stamm and Paul Ilbring and we're going to go green any second now. Is it going to be Stamm? Is it going to be Ilbring? Is it going to be anyone else? We're going to go green and it's a good start from Stamm getting a little bit wheel spin now and it's going to get a good start from Paul Ilbring but not enough to go alongside. No, it's been a great start, so flowing towards turn one, immediately close off the door then. There's Philip Starr as Bullbring looks to try and find a bit more these two already. But a great gap over the cars behind, you can see round the outside, there goes New Car, and then he's trying to round the outside of Dion Verges. He's gone off, and that's our first casualty of the afternoon. Gregor Hutu manages to get through that very safely indeed. So Gregor looking very strong right now. Croonan is trying to go side by side there with Pablo Lopez as well. Lopez seems to be the man on the better half at the moment. Up the inside he goes, but to be careful, there's Yassi Neiman and lingering, waiting for an opportunity to capitalise. He can't quite get it at the moment. Uh, the rest of the field flowing through. It's been a very clean start by the majority of the field. And you can see back in the foreground of the picture there, you can see Michael Koldenberg once again involved in the incident. Richie Stanaway is down way in the back of the field. So it's not looking strong there, but back at the front. Philip Stamm very close indeed with Paul Lubbering. Yeah, and Philip Stamm currently leading the field here. Paul Ilbring right at his tail. And Istvan Balog being overtaken right now by Gregor. So great start by Hutu once again. And uh, yeah, Neil is pretty much stuck in traffic still. Dion Verges, Pablo Lopez, Istvan Balog still ahead of him. And Gregor's just had the good chance at the start to make up some positions and has used all of them. So a good start once again. He's really shown that he can put this into the book. So um, great start by him. Fourth position currently coming by the first time here. Third, sorry. Uh, Paul Ilbring and Philip Stamm being the only ones who had Gregor started from 12. You may not forget that. He's already third by one lap. Gregor in third, Jesse in seventh. Jesse started in 12th. Sorry, Gregor started in 9th, of course. Jesse started in 12th. Uh, Roderick Croyne in 8th currently. So a lot of these guys made up positions, however, down the great Martin Kroenke, David Williams, 18 and 19. So they couldn't capitalize on the start. They both had issues Ilbring not is going off. to Ilbring get past. Ilbring is off at P2. And Ilbring is off. Awesome. Ilbring Sorry. is off down out of the hairpin, in fact. Um, he's just put the car sideways, now uh, one of the rare mistakes Paul Ilbring did really, and he's put the car completely sideways, he's lost a couple of positions, he's outside the top 10 even, and now Paul, um, uh, Philip Stump is the only one really uh, between Gregor Hutu and the lead already, so um, I'm, I'm not really trying to um, tell bad things about Philip Stump, but I don't think it's going to be too long for Gregor Hutu to get Philip Stump here, might even get him this time on the finish straight, and Jesse Amin is still only in fifth position, still stuck behind Pablo Lopez and Eastern Balov, and and if it goes on like that, Gregor Hutu will take a very quiet victory here. Once again, trying to get the lead on early. And he's looking good so far. Yeah, he needs it as well, doesn't he? His competitor, Jesse Neiman, is a little bit far down the road now. But he's got his hands full, to say the least. But Gregor needs to try and convert. He's been given the best opportunity he could possibly wish for in the opening laps of race two here. We said it before, we'll say it again. Race two and race one are like two completely different series. The racing mind just completely evolves. I mean, let's see that here today. Hootie needs to convert. Yeah, and Hutu side by side with uh, Philip Stamm right now, and Lopez also side by side with Eastern Balog. And this could be the chance for Neiman now into turn four on the left side. No, not really. No, and the ah, it's it's just too close. It's really just too close. You can't risk that. Uh, and take a look at New Carlin as well. He's actually just made a great move there on the back of Ellen Brand and Martin Kronke, who's still side by side. Kronke. Coming off the worst, as you can see, Ellen Brand sitting P15 at the moment trying to hold on. This midfield really has heated up, hasn't it? It's a massive cluster of cars as they come over the crest of the hill. Yes, it even. Oh, and Philip Stamm is off. Philip Stamm is off and uh, just trying to look at that. Yeah, he's got the tap from Gregor Hutu going down the chicane, breaking a little bit early, but Hutu definitely too late on the brakes. So, yes, and even still has his hands full with Pablo Lopez. We've said this before, not just in the pro toys, but in the I Racing Grand Prix Series World Championship. Pablo Lopez is probably one of the toughest guys to pass. He just does not crack under pressure. He's probably one of the most established defenders in all of the that I've witnessed. Yeah, and Pablo just not cracking under the pressure. You've hurt him. And uh, Jesse's trying all what he has, and uh, yeah, 
3.6 seconds down, Gregor, he already knows that this is going to be over by this. And it's just a question of whether trying to get the second position here or just settling down for third. Jesse has to get every point, though, and he has to try to get Pablo Lopez here. Liam said it, Pablo being one of the toughest guys to pass. If you don't know his videos, try to click it on YouTube, try to search it. Uh, GoPro Lopez, one of the most famous videos on YouTube involving sim racing, really. So, um, yeah, it's really good. And uh, Jorn, you're back with us in the booth here. Uh, lots of fights going on on track, really, on, other, on, on all and other ends and it's just so much racing going on here at the moment. Uh, still uh, up and running in this race and uh, cars intact, so uh, awesome racing. Uh, as we see in uh, Jesse Neiman and Pablo Lopez, Gregor Hutu, Alexei Loma, and all, several awesome passes and all made with respect and uh, so far clean. So far clean, we may not forget that Istvan Balog is trying to defend like a lion here. He was the one starting from second row. He started in third, he's only lost one position despite uh, exchanging the entire group of drivers ahead of him. So um, he's completely exchanged the and qualifying standings with new drivers. Oh. Nimina goes for it. Not yeah, enough. Huge, uh, he deep, deep dive into in the inside into turn four, but just he did not quite have it there. But he was right on the edge of uh, making a pass stick. If only a few inches more into the inside, and Pablo would have had no other choice but to let him have it. The Gregor Hutu comes across the line to take his fifth victory of this season, and it's been a great job, hasn't he? He started in P9. He didn't have the best race on, but he's taken the victory here at Phillip Island. His championship rival, yes, in Eminem, crosses the line now in P2. A great effort there by both Finns, and this championship battle further uh, extends its for, uh, full force, if you will, into the next round. Nothing settled, and Pablo Lopez, we said the winds of change are blowing. It's been a hurricane right now, because Lopez gets a podium. And we've oh, and there's a crash! Crash in the last Crimson's turn! Crimson and Williams are off! Uh, Williams gets it back on, I think it's going to be a position loss. Troy Short is way down the road, but Roderick Croonan uh, gets, gets a lucky escape there, as does David Williams in 8th and ninth position respectively. Ellen Brown came 7th, Balog 6th, and Kronke in 5th, so he did indeed uh, get past, I believe, in the end. Okay, so we're just going to wait for some official confirmation of results and then grab a couple of interviewees who want to talk about their race experiences. But one man I really want to hear for is Pablo Lopez. These past couple rounds, he hasn't really had the best of luck. He's been involved in some incidents which could have been avoided. It hasn't really been uh, the time of his life, to say the least, but he's made the most of what he has. He's 16th in the championship, and then only two top 10s here today, but he got a podium as well. So we'll hear from him, hopefully, a little bit later on. Going on to Mr. Pablo Lopez. Now, Pablo, before the race, we were saying that you've had a bit of bad luck recently, and we were hoping that the winds of change were going to... And they really did, didn't they? You got a podium in race two. How's your weekend been for you? Well, pretty happy in the weekend, this. Uh, and first race was pretty boring, but second was really good with pretty good overtakes uh, behind Gregor. And then I could battle a bit with Jis and, well... Finally, he overtook me, but finish behind him is really, is really good. Yeah, I mean, as you said, I mean, before this, you currently sat 16th in the championship, and it was really looking like you had all the talent there, but you couldn't quite get it all together. After two very impressive results, going into the rest of the championship, it must have been such a confidence boost for you. Well, I'm confident with my pace in the second race. Uh, uh, finishing in behind Gregor and Jesus is finishing like a boss. It's, it's, Whatever is is the better thing I can do is they are aliens. Okay, thanks very much, Pablo. We'll let you go and celebrate and um, do a new Ferrari signed by Fernando Alonso. And I believe that Marita has got another driver to interview. <laughs>